All right, the fantasy football season might be over, but this show never is. We've got the Footy Award nominations on today's show. We reflect on the season just a little bit, those Week 18 performances, and we get ready for the NFL playoffs. Do not miss a minute. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here all off season long. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. <sighs> yeah. Yep. 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 Catch that exhale, Mike. Yep. Off season time. You watch uh football to enjoy football. Oh, man. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this weekend was so great. It it's, was so great. It is hilarious because I I mean, look, clearly we love fantasy football. It is amongst my favorite things. But so is just so is football. And look, so when when you have now a weekend and like the playoff games where you just, I'm watching this football game to enjoy the greatness of the game of football and hopefully see some good performances, but I'm not you're not keyed in on that one player. Of, yeah, I mean they you, got they got to do well. They got to do well, or I look like a look like a schmuck. If you played pickup basketball, and you love basketball, you love being out there on the floor. You love shooting, running, defense, maybe some full court press. But you know what else feels nice? When you get like a couple minutes on the bench to get, drink to drink some Gatorade, yeah, catch your breath, and just watch it. You know, yeah. And um, it's this majestic this weekend, I watched some football. I did not watch every minute of every football game. Understood. And, um, you know, I I tweeted earlier in the week, I am still having like some, uh, uh, what, I don't know what you would call it, but those internal reactions that happen about 45 times a day where I'm like, oh, I got to go check my team. Oh, I got to go get a trade. In. Oh, I got to go make a tweak. Oh, the, the waiver wire. The machine hasn't turned off yet. No, no. But then I check my phone and I'm just the champion and I don't have to do anything, you know? <laughs> Yeah, like no, the work's I, already done. I get it. I it's get already it. been done, Al. Can you believe it? We're I in can. the off season. You there? Al's there. I'm here. Okay. He's he All watched right. football because his his Packers got it done. They, they, did. they did. The good franchises, the Packers, the Steelers, they just find a way into the playoffs. And then there's the Falcons. Oh man! And then there's oh, the Falcons. <laughs> I'm sorry, Falcons Woo! fans. Kyle, I you mean, ex no. I'm not. I'm. I'm happy. I'm happy for y'all because they've been freed from the clutches. Yes, they, of the evil one. Number two, <laughs> there is, there's hope. I mean, you go into next year, Falcons fans, the the ones who are realistic and not just the the you put your head in the sand. My team is the best at all times. There is an opportunity to improve. Now it's, I mean, your probability is still low because finding a good head coach as you see every single year it's it's difficult finding the right quarterback for a franchise finding the right head coach it's you're going to be wrong more than you're going to be right for those who don't know arthur smith has been terminated yes he has returned to the force <laughs> he has returned to the ether yes this is the second time that one of our arch nemesis on the show has been fired uh, it, adam gaze was the first it's a little sad because now I know that some that one of these other coaches, maybe a coach I thought I liked, will become will the next. become the villain. There will be another number two. Yes, there's there is always homeostasis. Like yes, there is at least one <laughs> like number that. two in the NFL at all times. Yeah, and um, on the way next year we'll figure <laughs> out who it is. But Arthur Smith <laughs> is gone. Ron Rivera gone. Black Monday Oof. already happened, and um. You know, this whole offseason is going to be filled with Bill Belichick chatter yep. and Jim Harbaugh chatter. And who knows? Who knows who else comes back into the coaching world? Right. So um, we are going to talk a little bit about the Week 18 performances. Today's show is about the footy nominations as well. So all of our fantasy football awards, 
You can start voting on them. Brooks, what's that web address that they need to go to? Footyawards.com. Let's see. That was smart of us. That's a good place to go. Footyawards.com. Vote before next Monday. We'll go through all the nominations on the show today, but you can go over there and vote. You're going to be able to watch a video of all of the best show moments as well because we always have you vote for your favorite show moment of the year, and there are some good ones we'll go through today. I've had a sneak peek of the video. Yeah. It's it's a lovely, lovely uh, walkthrough of the year. Everything's lovely except for that small portion of the video where I had recently shaved my face. <laughs> and you know YouTube when you when you put a video up there, they um they're measured, they're they're nice. I mean, but video they they choose like three random screenshots to be the potential Oh, for the thumbnail. To be the potential thumbnail. And they did select one uh, with my bare face. And I was like, you know, that wasn't a good time. Yeah, but yeah, Taylor Swift makes an appearance as yeah, well. I mean, like in the history of humans, mm-hmm. has anyone shaved their beard? And went yes. Oh, thank goodness! I I should have done this forever ago. Brad Pitt, probably Pitt. Yeah, well, because he he does whatever. Yeah, he can do whatever he well, wants. He wags like, oh, I should have been wearing this ratty t shirt forever because I look great. Will there ever be a time when we officially just declare that all men are required to have beards? Like. Mm. Is that in the Constitution? We could do an amendment, right? We could, but I mean, we we you know there are we have our our friends out there who can't grow beards. Yeah, and those guys when they try, yeah, yeah, that doesn't look, <laughs> that doesn't look so good. Um, everyone in here has some form of facial yeah. hair, so we're yeah, because we all have things to hide. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly our faces. If you didn't notice, Jason's <laughs> not here today. Yeah. Just taking a little break from. 2024 <laughs> the, the most jason thing ever we're a weekend Aye, i'm out i need a i need no. a week off guys no he's doing some good stuff but he's, yep. he's not going to be here this week and um so yeah, wait al you you the amendment has a weight threshold if you're over 210 pounds you're required to have a beard that's right to hide stuff <laughs> yes yeah. sir okay uh yeah you either have to have just one chin or just one beard that's the rule. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, a couple of quick reminders. If you brought home a title, go to fantasychamps.com. You use that code free ring over there and they will give you a free $59 championship ring. If you buy a trophy or belt. And um, right now we also have the DFS pass for free. So $0. What? Yeah. We, we did this last year for the first time. Uh, it runs through the NFL playoffs. The DFS podcast is still going, but the DFS pass is now zero money. It costs you zero money to get it. Uh, This is something that we're really proud of. The DFS pass has done a great job this entire year. Great writers, great resources. So if you play DFS, if you're through the regular season and you want to give it a shot, it will cost you zero zero money. Or if you've never played DFS and you're like, hey, I want to jump in, maybe learn some things. Jump in for free. Yep, there you go. So DFSpass.com. You can go over there and enjoy it for the the playoffs, the final four weeks, and uh, there you go. Because look, there are I, we talked about. I like I, we're at the point of the year where I can watch football and just enjoy football. Some people would rather have some skin. Yeah, and I, that will be me as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I, I noticed that right. I forgot we have all these uh, like on DraftKings. I had some of those year long bets, like the Garrett Wilson numbers, where everybody was expecting great things. By the way, Garrett Wilson said. Worst year of his life. That's that was a direct quote from Garrett Wilson. Yeah, but um, yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit of news first. News and notes from around the league. All right, uh, Arthur Smith. Goodbye, Ron Rivera. See you later. Yeah. You know, both those jobs are not bad jobs. Washington has the number two pick. Most cap space in the NFL, new ownership. That's a good job. And then the Falcons, the reason I say that's not a bad job is because they have elite offensive weapons. And they have a, div- a winnable division. I mean, that division does not have any long term dominant forces. Baker Mayfield is not a long term dominator of the division. Derek Carr, right. not a long term dominator of the division. Bryce Young, Mike, not a long time. <laughs> Not, oh, I mean, we were man. talking about that this morning. C.J. Stroud continues to blow your mind every single week with how good he is. And then Bryce Young. 
Yeah, he, he was. He plays quarterback. Stroud and the Texans won the division, and Bryce Young hasn't didn't score since week sixteen. The Cardinals have the the Texans pick, and when the season began, they were the odds-on favorite for the number one pick in the draft. That's how Vegas saw them. The Cardinals thought when they made that trade. I guarantee you, they did not think they were trading for the eighteenth pick in the draft. No, I I wonder if. Like you can do the hindsight analysis, get an actual honest answer from them, and say, "Now that that's settled, and you you've seen Will Anderson play, who was the player that you bypassed by trading down, is that still a good trade?" No, it's not. And these, the Cardinals have done this before. Remember uh, Terrell Suggs? Yeah, yeah. We traded down, passed on Suggs. Who needs that guy? <laughs> Hometown guy from ASU. Don't bring him into Arizona to be the most dominant pass rusher you've ever had. We'll trade down. I think Calvin Pace was part of that trade down. Yeah, so do care, careful what you wish for when you want your team to trade down. I mean, it's, I think it's usually the right move, but... No, C.J. Stroud is a superstar. When you, when it fails, it fails bad. He doesn't even have Tank Dell right now, and he's getting it done. Yeah. Uh, the Pan the Panthers, uh, their, their owner, David Tepper, fired everybody. No GM, no head coach, no quarterback. You should fire yourself. Yeah, well... They, I feel, Mike, you said it. I feel bad for Panther yes, fans. Yeah, you traded everything for your opportunity at a quarterback. I wonder if that is, you know, if you're Chicago. Let's just talk for a minute. We, it's the off season. We can do whatever. Let's we, go. Whatever we want. If you're Chicago, you have the number one pick. You have a decision to make on Justin Fields. Didn't play well this week. Played well the week before. Didn't play well the week before that. It's how it goes. Now you have two cases. You've got the Stroud mistake. And you've got, or I'm sorry, the the Stroud home run and the Brees, uh, Bryce Young mistake. Both outcomes are possible for you if you move on from Justin Fields. You got to make yep. a decision on a fifth year option for Justin Fields. Do you end up with the Stroud? Then you're thrilled. You trade down. You keep Fields, and you end up with Bryce Young. You're it's a disaster, right? Yeah. No, yes. Is there any world? Let me ask this. It's a fifth year option, right? He doesn't have to get an extension long Correct. term. Yeah, he's going into year four. Were you he's, right on that, Kyle? You here, Kyle? Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Kyle, Kyle that's correct. It's 2024. Okay, he's gone. He was, correct, yeah. We always have to make up something Kyle was doing when you don't hear from him right away. <laughs> and this time it was sleeping. Um, yeah, so yeah, he'll be going into year four, which means they will have to make the decision very – in this offseason, do they pick up the fifth year? But you still have – you have two years of a – a, a pretty cost friendly quarterback. So what? Team. What if you don't pick up the fifth year? Um, and you we'll still just, get him for a year, right? Well, you can. Yeah, you'll have year four, and then you can franchise. I'm, I I guess I've never heard anybody tease out the idea of taking a quarterback and keeping Justin Fields. There is that at number one. Yeah, I mean that's, that's you've got like, all the draft capital in the world already. You're picking at what eight as well? Nine. That, that's old school NFL. I mean, we just in. The, the modern world, it's you're going to have so much pressure of if you take a quarterback at number one and the team is 0 and 3, I mean, it will be it will be deafening from the media, from fans, everything saying, put the rookie in. And I mean, the, I think there is, unfortunately, there's, there's value to letting some of these kids sit. I mean, look, I mean, I the Green Bay Packers. It's probably with Jordan Love right now. the The fact that he got to sit. If Jordan Love goes from the draft into playing for the Packers, does he have the success that he's have that he had this year? I would say probably not. No, especially he, with all the reports that we kept getting of Jordan Love is not ready. Jordan Love is not ready. He he was this year. Yeah, and I don't think you can probably pull that off with the number one pick. I mean, when you draft a quarterback second round or something, you can sit that guy behind field see what you have as an asset, but just interesting. And then we had some, we had injuries in week 18. Yeah. The big one was Sam Laporta. I mean, this yeah. one, uh, knee injury, bad hyperextension, hyperextension with a bone bruise. That's devastating. It is. They're at home, right? Uh, They're it, the three. It's, it's, it's hard because the, the immediate reaction of everyone is, and Twitter, if you jumped on us, this is why you can't play your starters. You're playing in a meaningless game. But they they technically had a chance to get to the two seed, and to me, going from the three to the two is a pretty big deal. If they were in the two seed, they would be hosting the Packers if they had been able to do that. Now, Dallas would have had to lose, right? Yes. 
Uh, That's why I said you. Instead, it, they're going to be facing the Rams. Right. And that is going to be a game. Yeah. To I watch. would. I would. No offense, Packer fan. I'd rather play the Packers than the Rams right now. I am worried. Yeah, I would so, be, I'd I mean, be worried. You, you play to win, but it's it stinks to have the your rookie sensation missing time now. Well, and the other big game that took place and in, in concluded last night, the Buffalo-Miami game, I mean, there couldn't have been higher stakes. Like, Buffalo was already cl- – they had already clinched due yep. to the previous activities of the day. But you win, you host the Steelers. You lose, you go, and you play in negative two degrees in Arrowhead with your high-flying Miami offense. That's what's going on with Miami, and now yep. you don't have Bradley Chubb. It's going to be rough for Miami. I goodness, I'd be shocked if they beat the Chiefs, and that it makes me sad because I don't want to. I want to see new blood. I don't. I don't mind seeing Miami move on, but uh, we we do have one of our uh, devs here. Mr. Andy Schneider, he built a bracket maker for the playoffs that you can go to at myplayoffpicks.com. It's just a free tool. Mm -hmm. It gives you a screenshot of your bracket. So if you in your office or at home or your friends, whatever, if you want to go make your predictions on who's going to win the big game and all the other games. Yeah. And the, the medium games and the small games. Thank you. Yeah, all the different size games. Uh, it does all the reseeding for you based on your picks. Brooks would like you to be reminded of that fact. And well, you can just go yeah, and – That's a problem. You ever done a, a bracket on paper and you get to the end and someone's like, well, that's an, that's not a possibility. Yes. And you're like, oh, oh, crap. So far, and I'm seeing only four of our uh, office mates have, have put in their predictions. I've not done mine yet. I have not done mine either. But the uh, we've got three 49ers and one Ravens as the four champions so far. Okay. So I got to right. get into it. I got to dig in. Got some cowards in the office. <clears throat> yeah. Mike is going with the Steelers. Of course. Mason Rudolph, world champion, <laughs> with Mike Tomlin, Deontay Johnson. Yeah. Someone out there is. <laughs> Crazy yeah, people. You can tag us on uh, the social media if you check that out. What at MyPlayoffPicks? MyPlayoffPicks.com. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll do ours and we'll bring them up on the Thursday show. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Hurts dislocated his right middle finger, not fractured day to day. AJ Brown was down on the ground writhing in pain. He's he's. Uh, do we know anything about the knee injury? I've not heard anything. He went into the tent. He wasn't carted off. I don't think. Gabe Davis left early. Romeo Dobbs chest injury. People, Packers wide receivers keep hurting their chests. I don't know why, yeah, but it doesn't matter because. As soon as Romeo Dobbs goes down, then there's just someone else to jump right in there and be great. So, our first matchups this upcoming weekend. What do we have? We've got the big, the big weekend, right? Six games. Yeah, super wild card weekend. Cleveland, Remember, super, super, yeah. Because they've expanded. Oh, we can say super there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cleveland <laughs> taking on the Houston Texans. That should be a game. Miami in Arrowhead against Kansas City. Kansas City's favored. <laughs> Cleveland's favored by two and a half. Pittsburgh going to take on Buffalo. Buffalo favored by nine and a half. By far the biggest favorites of the week. Green Bay taking on Dallas. Dallas seven and a half point favorites at home. Los Angeles taking on Detroit. Yeah. Detroit three point favorites. Double revenge. It's, right. It's incredible. And then the Eagles taking on Tampa Bay. Phillies two and a half point favorites. You're, oh, because you're Tampa's at home. Tampa's yeah. at home. Oh, oh, you you thought it was too low. I just was. Gotcha. Yeah, I still think that's a little low. That tells you that I mean the momentum for Philadelphia right now. Yeah, and not good. No, no, not it is good. not. Um, all right, let's take a break. We'll talk some studs, and then we'll get into the footy nominations. So uh, let's dig in here. Some studs from week 18. You may have had them, you know. I, it's good to talk about because some of you won championships in week 18. Yeah. The scoundrels out there. Yeah. And then sometimes these these last week performances get ignored, and then you don't know the trajectory of some of these guys heading into next year. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. But here's how I want to do it. I just want you to tell me who you care about. 
at hmm. each of the position groups okay. of what they did right. in the year. So, okay. you know, at quarterback, the big the big weeks, Dak, big week. Josh Allen ends the year as a quarterback one again. Derek Carr had a four-touchdown week. What do you care about? Uh, I care about uh, all three. It, you know, we wanted to see Dak finish strong. 31 for 36. And, I mean, 279 and four. I mean, he's just – absolute dominant stretch of football and fantasy football Josh Allen you know staying as the quarterback one on the year and then the, the Derek Carr one is just like hey <laughs> you can you can do it Derek Carr we we knew it we we knew you could run this out there look but out of the last four weeks court, quarterback seven three 17 and one I mean it's it's inside of you Derek Carr it's there yeah, no, I'll, you just gotta believe. Yeah, I, I don't know. You gotta see uh, Kendra Miller for the first time. Yeah, Real, really. And he had himself a game. I wonder what the future will hold for Kamara. And would you? Uh, I think Kamara's there next year. Yeah, but would you rather? Do you think Kamara or like in drafts? Do you think Kendra Miller or Kamara is the better pick? Oh man, let's just ask the question now in the quarterback section Hold of studs on. where it let belongs. Me, <laughs> let me let me. How old is Kamara? He'll be turning. He'll be twenty nine in July. Ooh. Kendra had a good game. the The thing about the age cliff for running backs is, and he's definitely not as efficient on the ground at yeah, all. But it's yeah, he could still be a great pass catcher. But you you think it's you think it's not coming, even though we know every time it will. It comes for everybody. Yeah, it came for Austin Eckler this year, the number two overall fantasy pick, and then just poof. It seems to be gone. That's that's the the hardest part about it is if you are right, like you went on Derrick Henry. It's not like he, he was, still helped you all year long. He but still you had also a great know season. The future. He's, yeah, there was a couple dud games, but he was still had a great, uh, great year, great final game. So it didn't poof, but when it when it goes, it just it it's it's immediately gone. So depending on where they go in the draft, I think. Because Kamara is such a skilled pass catcher, I'm still okay with it. But it will, I'm not okay taking an early pick on him. Yeah, I uh, I wonder what the offseason will look like for that team in, in a lot of facets. But speaking of running backs, has anybody been as impressive as James Conner over the last five Dude, weeks of the year? Just a beast. His last five weeks, fifth, 11th, fifth, third, first. Absolutely dominant. Brought his yards per carry on the season up to five. That's how he ends the year. First 1,000-yard season of his career, despite missing four games. So with those four That's games so factored in, wild. he, he would have ran for almost 1,400 yards this year. So he didn't hit 1,000 that year in Pitt? That no, blew nine, my mind. 973. But, I mean, James Conner utterly dominated yeah, he did. defenses over the last five weeks of the and year. he's also turning 29. I know. <laughs> now, he at least he was a case of, like, didn't he have a little bit later start than others? Um, no, not really. No. Not really. And it doesn't. It, I don't think the age cliff cares. Well, um, yeah, twenty eighteen. So he, how old is he? He's going to be twenty nine. Yeah, he's he is twenty eight point seven according to our website. So he's going into year seven. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, Brees Hall dominant again, thirty seven for one seventy eight. I don't know that giving Brees Hall thirty seven carries in a meaningless game in the snow against New England is a good team process. Did you see though? Robert Sala, he said that they had got the math wrong. He ended the year with 994 rushing yards, but he thought that he had gotten Brees Hall to 1,000. Oh, no. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect job. You couldn't even get him to 1,000. Is there no one on that team that can do simple math? I guess not. It's addition. Jonathan Taylor, 30 for 188. Joe Mixon had his uh, had a huge game. He, he ended as running back five. That's pretty wild. Saquon Barkley, two touchdowns again. So the, the Saquon offseason is going to be very Do you want to read this tweet? Yeah, so they, Pat, he, Pat Leonard. He was asked, Saquon was asked, uh, you know, kind of about the end of the season, and Barkley said, I'm not going to go do the exit interview, <laughs> which power move here. Uh, but then he said, quote, talking about the franchise, they did it last year, so I'm numb to it. I don't have any feelings toward that at all. 
If you're going to do it, just don't wait until March 5th. Get it over with. If not, let me go. Simple. He no said feelings. The, he said the Giants. No feelings. Yeah, though. right. That's like a <laughs> Papa Josh didn't care if he won or lost against me. Why? Huh? Why do we have to pretend that we have? You're like, no, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna actually answer the question and not just, you know, a PR speech about what you, we'll see what happens. If you're gonna actually answer it, don't pretend you're not. You don't have feelings toward it. You're mad. Put these guys in order of of older running backs you'd rather have, okay? okay. It's going to be a task. Okay. Because we just talked about him. Henry? Okay. Probably a new home. Yes, for sure. Kamara? Age cliff? Okay. James Conner? Under contract for one more year in Arizona? Yep. Saquon Barkley? Prob if I had to guess, I think he's back in, in New York, but it might be franchise tag again. Oh, man. <laughs> um, he, But he won't have any negative feelings. No, I mean he played. He played well. Um, Henry Kamara Connor. <laughs> I wrote. I was writing the names down on this board. Okay. And I wrote Henry Kamara, Saquon Barkley, and then I wrote James Contract. <laughs> so that's not his name. <laughs> James Connor under contract. Uh, Put him in order. Of those, I'll still go. I'll go Barkley. Barkley. Uh, and then uh, Henry is just impossible because like if Henry is a Baltimore Raven. That'll be exciting. I mean, the, his touchdown upside will be incredible. But based off of the information I have right now, I would go Barkley, Connor, Pro and then I'll bet on Henry and then Kamara. Okay. What about based on the information from the future? <laughs> what would you do then? I will let you know when okay. I have it. Bijan, uh, he ended with only 11 for 28 on the ground, but he had – Seven for one. He had the huge touchdown reception. Seven for one on three, big seventy something yard reception. Finished as the quarterback or as the running back nine. But if you had to qualify, like if you had to be binary with your decision on whether he had a good or bad season. If you have to happy say, or sad. Uh, you have to be binary. I will go I'll say happy. Okay. I'm gonna go sad because I don't think that teams that had Bijan Robinson got what they needed this year from where he was drafted. I get that. And I, I would be very curious how many teams ended up in the title games with B. John Robinson as your first running back selected. The thing that – and we'll, we'll talk about this in uh, – we'll have an upcoming top ten things to remember. So I guess just a preview of one of the things of uh, that I've really been thinking about is the making sure you don't look at your roster and you're always happy about it. Because the, the first month – Honestly, would have been great for Bijan. You're the RB8, RB8, 25 against Detroit, understandable, and then RB10 against Jacksonville. So that's really a full month of a top 10 running back. That's a fantastic start. And as long as you were still diligent in making sure that you're like not just, I got Bijan, I nailed the pick, see you later, I'll see you in the championship, suckers. As long as you're still active and moving and making sure that you're building up some running back depth to weather that middle storm that happened. I think you were happy with him. Najee ended the year very strong, 26 for 1, 12 and 1 against the Love ba to see it. Baltimore backups. Derrick Henry, snow model, undefeated, 19 for 1, 53 Dude. and 1. They knocked Jacksonville out of the playoffs. Yeah. So it. maybe, uh, you know, Mike Tomlin gave him a call, <laughs> said, get it done. And Henry looked good. Great. I mean, he had a, a really a vintage, long Derrick Henry carry. What was not vintage is he didn't finish the touchdown. But also then uh, on his touchdown run, it was perfection. I mean, it was like following, the, you know, not rushing it, following the block, setting up a defender with a with a juke. And it was like Henry's an outlier. We already know Derrick Henry's an outlier, but it's going to be very difficult to gauge him for fantasy next year. Wide receiver standouts for Week 18: Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb. Do well, doing they did work. did what they yep. have been doing. 13 for 98 and two for Lamb. 12 for 192 and one for Jefferson. Nico Collins finished as the wide receiver nine this year. For all of you believers out there, yeah, amazing. Remember, Jason was pooping all over that man. <laughs> but every time he had a chance to perform, it was a little bit like Robert Woods in Buffalo in the early days. Yeah. When you watched yeah, Robert fair. Woods back in Buffalo, you were like, that's a good receiver. He's just never had the opportunity. And this year, C.J. Stroud afforded it to him in ways that we never thought possible. 
Amon Ra. Amon Ra is a monster. Monster. Absolute monster. Jacoby Myers scored a touchdown. And Calvin Ridley, 6 for 106. What a boom bust season for him. Yes. Calvin Ridley, Kyle, is is Ridley finally a free free agent? I can't. Yes. Okay, that that'll be a that's gonna be a really tough decision for Jacksonville. Because Calvin Ridley's gonna want that shmoney. But already twenty nine being streaky, I don't know that he's worth the money. And I I got some sad news for you. I mean Oh no. Well that's that's a little loud actually. But Evan Ingram. Oh, oh, oh man. Anything you want to say? Ten catches for seventy nine and a touchdown. Just the it was it was awesome. So if you're somehow missed what we're talking about, Evan Ingram was twelve receptions away from tying the tight end all time record for most catches in a season. Obviously thirteen for breaking it. Jason and I had a very spirited debate about the possibility of it happening. And I said, I I think he can do it. I wasn't You're my, dead wrong. I was not anyway dead wrong proclaiming it was a lock, but it was a when you're that close to a historic record, it can happen. And the way that the pace shifted for Engram through this game was absurd. I mean, he had multiple catches on the first offensive drive, so he was he was easily on pace. Disappears from the offense. Before you know it, and we're going into the fourth quarter, and he has ten catches. Ten catches at the top of the fourth. We didn't get there. Seemed like he was going to. And then yeah. uh, we did score. Uh, somebody scored a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Big Montana. You got to hit the button when you can hit the button, Mike. And you got to I mean, you got to dunk on people when they're not here. Jason well, canceled the bet. Jason canceled the he, bet. What a coward. After the last Jimmy Graham touchdown, he said, no, I can't take any more. Yeah, he said, I got to get out of this bet. I, I'm going I, broke. I can't handle Jimmy Graham versus Will Disley touchdown bets anymore. I'm out. And he would have been, you know, $100 up another richer. $100. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. Coward. Yeah, and uh, Laporta scored. McBride scored. Not big yardage numbers. Isaiah likely back into the end zone as well. And then other players played bad. Yeah. Um, Like Austin Eckler. <sighs> Dude. And now he's a free agent. And can I be, can I be honest? I Yeah. I just feel bad saying anything negative about him. Yeah, I I I totally understand we're, that. We're living in the the world of like the fantasy football world. Yep. And so the stuff we say should hopefully be contextualized in that world. But I also know Austin Eckler. And Austin Eckler is an amazing dude, and nobody works harder than Austin Eckler. And the Lord knows that he was not handed a good situation there this season right. in Los Angeles. So you know, it's still hard for me to see Austin Eckler going someplace and being more than a compliment, but I will say this. We didn't expect James Conner to go to Arizona and become the the James Conner yeah. that we got. No, the, the James, In fact, he was dying in Pittsburgh. The, the James Conner signing by Arizona was, oh, here, Arizona did it again. Gave a really old running back a bunch of guaranteed money, but Conner has been great for them. That's, Three years in Arizona when we thought, he was dying out. Yep. So maybe Eckler has maybe. the situation and the health. Like that's the part. It's easy to say to blame it all on an age cliff because it's just really it's the high level view. But if he's hurt, I mean, you brought up Josh Downs. Yeah. Oh, what happened to Josh Downs? Yeah. I'm telling you, in the middle of the season, Josh Downs he wasn't just performing for Indianapolis. He was he was the leader in a ton of advanced metrics when it comes to. Yards of separation from the defenders. He was uh, picking apart defenses. Then he got hurt. Let's not just, you know, throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to right. speak. Sure. But, um, yeah, we've got, uh, you know, Mike Evans into the year kind of limping through. Yeah. Same with Pittman, Jamar Chase. Welcome to next year, Jamar Chase. Same with Metcalf, JSN, George Pickens. What, what, full Gabe Davis. Didn't score. <laughs> so, yeah. And then Drake London, you're free. You're free to fly, but they got to find a quarterback. And they pick at number eight again. Atlanta does. And I'm going to tell you right now, you, you, they're going to have to trade up if they want one. I don't think they. That'll be the move. That won't be the move. No, you'll have, you'll find Russell. 
Wilson. May, yeah, you'll find a stopgap quarterback, and it's fine. And uh, I mean, I, I, I'll do a pre congratulations here to Michael Pittman, who he was talking about his contract, and he said both him and the team they you know a a joint decision of we're going to table negotiations until the season is over, aka. I'm betting on me. You're betting against me. Whoops! Because his number, his demands have skyrocketed. That guy could go to the Colts and say, make me the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. No, he can't do that. Yeah, you can. No, you cannot. You can. No, that's outlandish. Uh, you can, he you doesn't can go deserve say more it. money than Tyreek and Jamar Chase and Jefferson. He's not even on those levels. It, I'm, I'm not saying he is on their level, but, Here, let but me every, every year the contract just goes up. Let me change the language. Okay. Make me the highest paid possession receiver in the NFL. <laughs> That's what he can say. <laughs> Give me that Jarvis Landry money. He's he'll, going, get, he'll get money. He will get a big, big bag Who gets of money. more money, Calvin Ridley or Michael Pittman? Michael Pittman. Okay. Just age? And production. Who would you rather have on your team? Michael Pittman. I don't know. No. Oh. Maybe. He he's he, he's a good player. Michael Pittman is a great player and when you you can't just disappear. Like Calvin really vanishes for for lengths of time. And if you're a true number one wide receiver, I mean, you, you Michael can't disappear Pittman like that. Had, like, he disappeared a little bit. He's a B in our consistency. Didn't do nothing the last three weeks, maybe dealing with injury. Yeah, he, he, he does, definitely was. He here's the thing. Game. Michael Pittman doesn't have a, in my opinion, he doesn't have the top five finish in him. Like, that's not an outcome. And I don't think that's, Anthony that's Richardson's going to help that. I think he's a, I think he's solid, like T. Higgins. Who would you rather have, T. Higgins or Michael Pittman? That's the tier to me. T. Higgins is going to get both, a bag. They're T. Higgins both will get, get a bag. a ton of money, yeah. But I don't think either one is a um, necessarily the kind of, I don't know. He's not my part of typical number one. But that's that, that's not a disrespectful thing. He's, I mean, eleven hundred yards. That's fine. Eleven with a backup quarterback. I know it's eighteen games though. I mean, that's not crazy. That's not crazy. Uh, it's, it's I think it's pretty crazy to have a backup quarterback, and you put up those numbers. Okay, I I feel like you always think I'm trying to disrespect Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman. Well, that's only because of the the large history of you always crapping that's, on Michael Pittman. That's seventy two yards a game. Are you happy with that? Seventy-two. Yeah, that's. I mean, those are good okay. numbers. All right. well, yeah, I guess I am <laughs> crapping on him. I'm trying to <laughs> find a lane. That's, that's ridiculousness. All right, hit your button then. What button? I mean, build the city if you want. Oh, to. Oh, I don't even have that for the, button for anymore. the off season. I think they they took it away from me. City. I'll get Andy out of there. Not allowed anymore. You're out of the city. Look, I wouldn't invest my entire future money on Michael Pittman. That's what I'm. You can spend it. Spend what? it elsewhere. But you're either you you pick Michael Pittman and move forward. Do you think with he's you. back with the Colts? Yeah, I do. Okay, but I'm saying that the the situation that the Colts are now in because they didn't extend him before the season started is now you his demands. I guess it you was can, his best. You can go year. You can do the whole NFL business. We're going to franchise you, and then Pittman will say, "Well, either I'm going to play or I'm not." So that's in the playbook. But if you don't keep Michael Pittman. And your wide receiver crew, like who's your best wide? Then Josh Downs is your best wide receiver. Would it be you will fail? Would it be considered an insult if I were to call him Big Lots Michael Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> would that be would that be a mean thing to say? Uh, it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you it could, but be, it's right. It could be meaner. It's right though, right? Um, sure. Okay. Nothing wrong with Big Lots. Yeah. You can and find a deal. And back when he was actually healthy, nothing wrong with Michael Thomas. No, exactly. All right. We, we're t too much Pittman. <laughs> we're moving on. This is what people came to listen to, the Footy Award nominations. Let's rock. That's Yay! right, baby. The fantasy football season has concluded. It's award season for everybody. Yes, it is, Mike. Have you got your ring in the mail yet? Uh, it is. It's been ordered. Yes, it's in the mail. You know, then it, sure. Oh man! All right, footyawards.com. Vote before next Monday. The winners will be announced on next Tuesday's show. We'll have Jason back for the announcements, the awards, the footies. 
Here we go. Mike, why don't you start by introducing oh. our first nomination? The first category we will discuss is the performance of the year. Which single week performance was the most impressive? And this one is it is usually difficult to narrow it down because there are huge weeks, but you know, sometimes they're done a little bit earlier in the season and maybe less important. And it feels not as impactful, especially when you're talking about wide receivers. But here we go. The nominees are Dak Prescott, Week 10 versus the New York Giants, where he went 404, also had a rushing till, uh, touchdown. Lamar Jackson, Championship Weekend yeah. versus Miami, 320 and 5. Then at the running back position, you had the Devon Achan breakout against Denver. That was so wild. 202 on the ground, two receiving touchdowns as well. Then you had Christian McCaffrey. In the first week of the playoffs, 18 for 115 with a touchdown, 5 for 72 and 2 through the air. Then a, a three-pack of wide receiver performances. Jamar Chase, which I believe fantasy points-wise is the biggest one of the year. But week five against Arizona, 19 targets, 15 for 192 and 3. Amari Cooper, a man near and dear to Dude, Andy's that, heart. That's going to be hard not to vote near for. And, that, but that's what I'm saying. It's Week 16. Is you have some emotional attachment. You played Amari. I played Joe Flacco. So this performance means a lot to us, but does it mean a lot to everyone else? Week 16 at Houston, 15 targets, 11, 265, and 2. And then the man, CeeDee Lamb, championship weekend, 13 for 227, and a 92-yard touchdown. Last year, the winner was Joe, Joe Mixon, who had, uh, he had a five-touchdown five touchdown game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the second nomination that you'll be voting for, the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year, which player's injury hurt fantasy managers the yeah. most. Last year, Cooper Cup took it home. This year? Who will it be? Nick Chubb. Oh, J.K. Dobbins, both early injuries. Aaron Rodgers, as early as it gets. Joe Burrow. Justin Jefferson, slicing up the middle of your season. Yeah. And then Mark Andrews. You had a an unfair advantage at tight end, and then you didn't. Yeah, you didn't. Aaron Rodgers, it, uh, so I play a, a decent amount of uh, Fortnite now with my boy. Yes. And they give you an award. Like, I, I don't know, you know, a little bit to mock you, a little bit to say, hey, get back in there. If you're the first player eliminated, you get a, eliminated, you get a little uh, XP bonus. Really? Yeah. They're like, hey, first elimination, have good you, for you. Have you got that? Uh, oh, I've gotten it. Got that bonus? Oh, yeah, several <laughs> times. All right. What else do we have? Uh, the poopiest pants award. Yes, very. This one's illustrious. If you get this, yes. Uh, despite high expectations, this this player let you down over and over again. Oh man! Last year's winner was, in fact, Kyle Pitts. Ooh. I don't think his pants were big enough <laughs> to win no. it this year. But the nominees: Austin Eckler. Sorry, Austin. Oof. Uh, running back two off the board. Travis Kelsey at the one hundred and five. Started great. Uh, Patrick Mahomes oh, start, yeah. started yeah. great. Quarterback one, Tony Pollard, the RB8 in the second round. Damian Pierce in the fourth, who was the running back 18. And Miles Sanders sitting atop his, his wondrous bag of gold as the RB20 did nothing. You know, that one will be a very interesting vote to see who really felt yeah. the pain because Pollard, Mahomes, Kelsey Eckler especially mm -hmm. really hurt people. I will be extremely curious to see who wins that. The number, uh, our fourth award, the waiver wire wonder, which is the undrafted waiver wire stud. That was the best signing. I have a hunch on who will win this one, but there's a couple. I, it, there's a couple close ones. Yeah. Last year was Justin Fields. The nominees this year: Kyron Williams, Puka Nakua, Nico Collins, Jaden Reed, and Brock Nasty. <laughs> Brock Nasty. I don't know. Brock Purdy. <laughs> Brock Purdy. Sorry, that's what I meant. I don't know. You're trying to trying his, a new nickname on trying to up his street cred. Honestly, when you read through those names and then you get to Brock Purdy, you're just like, hmm. But he was great. Did I you know. see the uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey talking about Brock Purdy growing facial hair? No, no. But this is what I'm talking about. Was, this is why I gave him Brock Nasty as a nickname. Is it's a pretty funny clip because they Can't were do it? they were asking McCaffrey like, why don't you do the beard? And he was you know getting on himself. He's like, yeah, I I don't connect, which. Yeah. The fellas out there, I we I know it. I mean, I didn't connect until <laughs> like my thirties. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. it was just real patchy. 
So did you was, ever try to fix that problem, like with the, the rollers or get hair to grow, or did you just did live not, with it? You just no. lived with it. Yeah, I well, I I didn't look into it. I didn't realize there was things I, I could be dude, doing. I don't know. I don't know if it works. Uh, but he was talking about that, and then they asked about Brock Purdy, and he was like, "Oh, he's never had a single hair grow out of his I, face in his life." Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> um, but oh, so the yeah, so that was the waiver wire. That'll be one, a tight but, race between two people. Uh, the fantasy quarterback of the year last year's winner was Jalen Hurts. This yeah. one. That he's, this is interesting, too. Of Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts back in the conversation, Lamar Jackson, and Dak Prescott. Because yeah. you have the number one guy, but then you have players who were really impactful. Lamar was incredible but inconsistent, and yet if you made it to the championship week with him, you won. See what people do. Fantasy running back of the year nominees. Last year, Josh Jacobs won this. The nominees this year, Christian McCaffrey. Oh, Josh Jacobs still game time decision. Yes, Just, for, even for yep. um it, for week one. Yeah, Raheem Mostert. Yeah, I mean, what a steal Mostert was. Uh, McCaffrey was the one on one. Mostert was late. Kyron Williams, unbelievable. Rashad White, maybe the best value. Jameer Gibbs came on really strong. So good, good yep. competition there for fantasy running back of the year because we want you to factor in draft position, big game performances. Um. Mike, who are the wide receiver that you're not? The wide ones? receiver candidates this year, CeeDee Lamb. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my sweetie. <laughs> Sorry. Tyreek Hill. That's who I'm voting for. Amon Ross, St. Brown, Mike Evans, Puka Nakua. This one is brutal. Yeah, those are all great. Brutal. Tight ends. Last year, Kelsey won it. This year's nominees. Kelsey's not even in it. Sam Laporta, well, see, TJ Hawkinson, George Kittle, David Njoku, yeah, and Evan, just missing the record. Ingram, we we kind of figured as a group that despite Travis Kelsey's, you know, finish on the season, it's not you cannot be up for poopiest pants and the best tight end of the agreed, year. agreed, yeah. So uh, that'll be a close vote. You know, we're consistent here. That's what we're about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then what am I? Oh, breakout player of the year. Last year, well, Justin Fields won it. He won the hearts of many of us for fantasy football. But this year, the candidates are Rashad White, Kyron Williams, Isaiah Pacheco, and his angry feet. Yes. Nico Collins, Sam Laporta, and Puka Nakua. The rookie of the year. Last year, Kenneth Walker took it home. This year, Jameer Gibbs, Bijan, Devon Achan, Puka Nakua. And Sam Laporta are the nominees. Yes, and Brooks would like us to remind people uh, the honorable mention goes to C.J. Stroud because while it was like for the NFL, it was quite nope, the ride. No, let's put him in. Put him in. Put him in. He's, he's the QB eleven. Don't matter. Okay, we can put him in. You don't want to put him in? I don't think he deserves to be in the QB eleven. And not it's a ton not by of, points per game, though, right? Not a ton of games. I, yeah, I don't know where he everything? is. Points per game, we could we could see because he did miss two games. I don't. I, I don't know. I think I think when you start a season as a rookie and you come on late, I wouldn't look at the end of year finish. I'd be looking at like what was his peak like. His peak was very small All for right. fantasy. All right. All right. If there's a rebellion, it's at FF yeah. Hitman. Well, okay, let me. Okay, I'll read it off to you. Quarterback twenty two. 13, 12, 10, 17, 12. Mute his mic. 23. Here we go. 1, 9, 13, 4, 15. Okay. Yeah, we don't have to do it. Same. I when just wanted to give him some. When you're up All against. Right. He the... won't win, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, stop. All right. He won't win, so stop wasting people's time. Maybe. That's All what right. I say. All right. Uh, am, am I back up? Yeah, comeback player comeback of the year. Comeback player of the year. It's, it's short and sweet this year. Raheem Mostert, Baker Mayfield, Joe Flacco. Just three, and huh? And Michael Pittman. Just three. Just three in contention. Can I put Michael Pittman in comeback player of the year? No, no. Oh, man, come on. Steal of the draft award. Which player was the absolute best value in their draft compared to their average draft position? Last year, Josh Jacobs, the fourth round pick, was the winner. This year, Rashad White in the seventh round. Mike Evans in the seventh round. David Montgomery. In the seventh round. Oh, man. That was a... The seventh was hot. A hot seventh. Devon Achan in the 11th or Sam Laporta in the 13th round. All right. 
And the playoff king. Who drove fantasy managers to a championship during playoff weeks <laughs> 15 through 17? Last year, it was Jarek McKinnon. Which, oh, yeah. Which was the playoff king, Jarek McKinnon. It was wild. It seemed like it was going to happen again. And then Jarek McKinnon was hurt. But here we go. Lamar Jackson. Joe Flacco. Jeff, Joe Flacco in here. Yeah. QB 9, 1, and 5. Unbelievable. Yeah, we're uh, looking at just weeks 15 through yep. 17. Kyron Williams, James Conner, CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ra, St. Brown, and David Njoku. Yeah, good luck. Man. Good luck voting on this one, everybody. All right, do, will they give me multiple trophies to hand out to some of my guys here? Sure. Okay. Nickname okay of the year. Okay, the final two awards always. These are the good ones. Very, very fun. And when you vote for these, footyawards.com, um, you get to vote for three. Your three favorite, and then we'll see who wins it. Um, the nickname of the year and the show moment of the year. I'll go through the nicknames last year. Uh, Al, make sure you have this drop ready for us. But last year's winner, Leonard Fournette, the dump truck. <laughs> oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Almost wasn't ready. Oh, uh, he was ready. I tried to I talked slow and everything. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh Leonard Fournette took it home with the dump truck last year, but listen to these nominees, guys. <laughs> and my goodness, there's a lot. Uh you got Gabe the Babe for Gabe yeah. Davis. Okay. Oh, you guys oh, you Yeah, the, we did. You, JK two legs. JK two L, man. JK two L for JK Dobbins. That's stupid. All right, Schoon Man for Luke Schoonmaker. How can you go through any of this list and say, oh, that one's stupid? Stupider. <laughs> um, Cameron for Cam Akers. Yeah. Okay, I rest my case. Bananarama for Banana Will Rama! for Will Levis. Oh, we've got Rippin' Farts for <laughs> Brett Rippin. We got Fergalicious for Jake Ferguson. Yeah. yeah. We got just Huge. Huge. For Quentin Johnston. We got Bill Bo Bajent for Tyson Bajent. I forgot about him. <laughs> We got T McBee for Trey McBride. Ah, Fat Thor <laughs> for Josh Jacobs. <laughs> Fat Thor wasn't even really a coming into the season. Supposed to be a nickname. Fat it was, Thor. It was more of me joking around, but it's it, I don't know. It stuck around. Brevin Almighty for Brevin Jordan. Ooh. Danny DeVito for Tommy <laughs> DeVito. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. And then we've got Arthur Sith for that mean old man. Dan Danny DeVito. What are we doing here? These Did are all you, Jason was, approved. I was going to say, was Jason in charge of yeah, this? Yeah, he was. Where's Brock Nasty? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So That'll those be are the 2024. Yeah, I guess so. Those will be uh, <laughs> the nominees. And then, Mike, we've got um, got some show moments. Yeah. And they can, uh, when they go to footyawards.com and they get to the show moment of the year, there's a link to a YouTube video with all of these moments. Yes. The 2022 winner, who can <laughs> ever forget, Andy's voice crack as I think you were coming back from COVID, that's some, right. From you were coming back from some sickness, you didn't you didn't know if you had the show opening and you, and you didn't. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. But you but, went for it. Yeah, and that uh, that's all that matters. So this year the nominees are Taylor Swift joins the show. <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. talked about that waiver rankings rankings R rankings yes uh, oh old man Thielen made the list oh, it's me <laughs> see the reason you don't like that as much is because you didn't get to do the voice i just tried it on for it's, size it's delightful it is real <laughs> making fun of old people is great okay all right and they deserve it all right uh old man Thielen. uh the mock draft anger when J jason got repeatedly sniped during a mock draft it was that hilarious. was funny the show 1500 musical number okay uh, J Jason wanting a game. Hashtag game perv. I want this game. Yeah, yeah that, that devolved quickly. Uh, the wheel of shame candidate from this year. We we went with the Alvin and the Chipmunks. The the geese talk where these two clowns didn't know what that a goose and a swan are different animals. We had late edition. Jason gets a not thought where Jason missed the word not and reported false news. And then the trade betrayal saga between our fearless host, Andy, and the betrayer, Papa Josh. And his sidekick, Al. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget that part of it. <laughs> he would happily have me forget. All right. Brooksy, we're announcing these winners when? Next Tuesday. Okay. Beautiful. Footyawards.com. Go vote. We'll hand out some footies. 
uh, next Tuesday to some very deserving winners. And I think that's going to wrap us up. And some deserving losers. That's true. Yeah. No one... Look, when you get the uh, Poopy Pants Award in the mail, yeah. which obviously they're all going to be in the mail after we announce the winners, um, that one's that's a tough one to put on the mantle. A lot of people don't put it on the mantle. I say if you receive it, Arthur Smith, if that's you, you know, put it on the mantle. I agree. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thursday we're doing a Fantasy Footballers AMA, so there will be some uh, opportunity for you to put questions in out on the social media world uh, over on X at the FF Ballers. Or on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And we'll have the Footy Award, uh, Footy Award show next Tuesday. And then next Thursday, the Truth oh, series begins. The Truth. So for those that don't know what that is, we'll start looking at the truth of the fantasy finishes at every position and whether players legitimately helped your team, which we kind of got into it today about uh, like um, you know, Bijan. What's right, the truth yeah. about Bijan? Yeah. We'll dig into the numbers, the consistency, all of that stuff. And uh, if you want extra episodes of the show, we're in our off-season schedule. So shows are Tuesday and Thursday. There's a extra episode of the show that you can listen to at jointhefoot.com. That is for those that support the podcast on Patreon. And I think we're done, Mike. We did it. We did it. We did. And, uh, man, the season's over. Wow. Thanks for being or with us. Or is it just beginning? Ah! Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.